This is the Jenkins Google season of Docs office hours. It is the 21st of September, one day before DevOps world. And we live by the Jenkins code of conduct. Marky, you want to start us on the Katakoda introduction? Uh, we are, yes, hi. Uh, for those that don't know me, I'm Marky. I am one of the Google Summer of Docs mentors along with Kristen. Hello, everybody. I will be doing a presentation today of Helm and Katakoda. I am going to start sharing my screen. Give me just a second. Let me know when everybody sees my screen. I yes, can I can it. see your screen. Awesome. So for anybody that's seen me do presentations, you know that I, I often botch them. So I'm going to do my best as I work this. Uh, I did this. I, I set this deck up, which I will share with everybody once this is done. Uh, I'll add it to the uh, agenda I, notes. Uh, I put this together, but I didn't actually think through talking through it. So I'm going to do my best. This will be sort of an introduction to Helm in Katakota. We're going to start off with the Helm introduction. Uh, what I would say, and I'll leave this up to Zenob how you would like to do this. If you want to ask questions as we go through it, or if you want to wait till the end, either way, I'm fine. This is more of uh, items for you. Okay. All right. So for the Jenkins, for Jenkins and Helm, there is a chart that is uh, currently available. It is at the repo at Jenkins uh, CI and then into the Jenkins chart. This chart installs a Jenkins server, which allows to spawn agents on Kubernetes utilizing the Jenkins Kubernetes plugin. A first commit for this was in 2016. It was by Vic Inglesius. I think I said that correctly. Uh, he is from Google, super awesome person. It has had 300 contributions by 180 contributors. We moved this in November 13th, on November 13th, uh, well, let me start that over again. Migrated this to the Jenkins CI Jenkins repo as Helm stable. And the reason that we did that is because November 13th, 2020, the current stable and beta Helm repos will be deprecated. So everybody is now having to move to their incubated repos. Kind of an overview on how to install this chart. You're going to need a Kubernetes cluster. And then you'll also need Helm version 3. If you use Helm version 2, uh, you'll need to change the chart a little. There are differences between the two versions and that's not backwards compatible. Once you have these two items, uh, prerequisites ready to go, you will install this by doing a Helm repo at the Jenkins uh, repository. And then you just do a Helm repo update and that will actually pull all of the metadata in. And then you can just do a Helm install. You can call it my release. The actual, uh, as you see here, it's called my release. You can change that name to anything you want. And then you'll just actually reference the repo and then the chart that you wish to install. What do you get? You get Jenkins running on Kubernetes, uh, which spawns agents on demand using, uh, this is what I put, the awesome Kubernetes plugin. I am one of the uh, maintainers of that plugin, as well as JCAS configuration support, which is the default configurations out of the box, which can be customized via the values.yaml file. I will go into a little bit more of what the values.yaml does, but essentially on a high level, that is where you will make all of your configurations that you want the Helm chart to actually uh, inherit. So it, uh, go ahead. I, I should have asked this process question up front. Marky, do you want us to ask questions during or towards the end? What, what's your preference? It does not matter to me. I would, whatever Xenop likes to do or whatever the everybody on the call would like to do doesn't matter to me okay so then then i had a i'll, I'll take the doesn't matter to me and i'm allowed to ask a question now and <laughs> the values that i'm used to running a jcast configuration with a jenkins.yaml file that has 
my whole Jenkins configuration in that file or most of it. Um, how can you distinguish for me, or will you later distinguish for me how it's different, the Jenkins.yaml that I use compared to this values.yaml? You, what you would need to do for the configuration piece of Jenkins is move your Jenkins.yaml file into the values.yaml. Oh, okay. So it's that super simple. easy. Yeah, it's super easy. Super. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. And then you have persistent storage uh, for your Jenkins underscore home. Uh, I am not going to actually do a demo in here because it's very straightforward. And what I'd like Xenop to do is to really get an understanding of how you do this. I would like you to try uh, after we're done to do the uh, an installation yourself and you can do this with Minikube. And then I'd like you to ping me directly. Uh, I'm, Kristen, you have a good understanding of Kubernetes as well, is my understanding, correct? Yeah, yeah, I've used it and stuff for. Awesome. Okay, so Xenon, um, you could ping. So um, I've actually tried running a different. Hello, can you I can hear you, but you're cutting out a little bit. So I, I thought I heard you say you tried running something. Yes, actually, I tried running a deployment in Helm, but I had issues with persistent volume configuring something about permission. Okay, so that probably means that you don't have a service set up either at the cluster level or the namespace level. Uh, and uh, excuse me, not a service, but a service account uh, for whatever it is you're trying to install. So in Kubernetes, you have, there's R, there's things like RBAC and RBAC works in sort of two, uh, two abstractions. One is at the cluster level and that's called the cluster role binding or at the namespace level, which is called the uh, role binding. Uh, and you have to have services uh, for whatever you're doing that's going to be utilizing permissions within one of those scopes. Uh, yeah. I can show you how to how to do that. We can, you, if you can, maybe after this, you can show me sort of what it is you're doing and I can walk you through that if, it, if that's possible. Okay, thank you. One of the things that I will note on uh, when you run the demo is in order to view the logs, you'll have to configure a log recorder. Uh, and that uh, on the last line of this slide, you'll see you add that name, uh, org.csanchez.jenkins.kubernetes, and you set it to all, and you'll be able to pull specific logs just for the Kubernetes plugin. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Mark, as you were saying about your JCAS configuration, here's how you would actually do that, how you can supply your JCAS configuration file. And this is just sort of an overview of what that would look like to add that to the values.yaml. And how does the auto reload work? So the actual drink controller will uh, will do the trigger of reload. It'll do the JCAS reload for the Jenkins CI uh, config. It'll update the configurations and then watch for changes. Very straightforward. And if you're familiar with how Eddie's uh, uh, registration works, this will seem very familiar to you. So, so for me as a Jenkins administrator, that's quite impressive. So that says, if I change the configuration as code definition, the running Jenkins will automatically reload it and- That is correct. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so there's- Yeah. Oh, very nice, thank you. Okay, so, the, so for me as a Jenkins administrator, you've made my life easier that my act of deploy, of storing something to the, the Git repository where I track the configuration will or can automatically upgrade that and install it into my into my Kubernetes cluster. Cool. That is that is correct. And so, how does the auto relay work? Is the Jenkins controller called the Java, Java Ops? It does a reload token. Uh, it takes the pod name and sets that as a variable. It relays sidecar, which is where the cask configuration is, and then does a reload call to the API. And essentially, that's what it looks like right there. Uh, so I'm going to leave out uh, how you can configure ingress. And the reason being is, is in the documentation, Zenob, you'll definitely touch on this. 
I felt that for this type of an introduction going into ingress and, and ingress objects and the ingress controller is a little bit more in depth because of the different ways you could do it. You could use Nginx, you could use HA proxy, and it's a little bit more involved. So I didn't want to like confuse you. And so what does your setup look like when you do this initial Helm configuration, you opt the containers, which will be in a knit container, your Jenkins controller, and then the reloading of the, the JCAS config. You'll have your two services, which will be for the UI and the agent. There'll be your persistent storage. And then your, notice uh, your RBAC here. And this is the problem I think you may be running into, Xenop, is the RBAC, which it has a schedule agent and then another job that does the watching for the configuration as code config map. Uh, these all have service accounts that are allowed uh, for the, this particular chart. It allows this at the cluster level, not the namespace level. So from a permission standpoint, when you allow things at the cluster level, it's a little bit more insecure. Uh, but this is just to get somebody going. I would say if you wanted to lock this down a little bit better, you would move this to a namespace level, which would be the cluster role and then the uh, cluster binding, the cluster role. I always forget those. So understanding the Jenkins agent permissions and Kubernetes, which permissions do the agents have in the cluster? The permissions of the service account of the agent pod. And this is again, what I was talking about. Which service accounts do they use? Nothing, in, nothing is specified default. That's, uh, uh, that's more for security. You never wanna just have default admin. And then you can also specify a service account via the agent template and via pod specifications. So in the Kubernetes plugin, you have the ability to use a pod template. So you can also further specify what you'd like your agents to look like as those get spun up in the cluster. And here's sort of an idea of what that pod specification would look like. And then here's the pod agent template where you can set further configurations. And how are permissions granted to a service? As I was saying earlier, there's two types. The role binding is permissions per namespace where the cluster role binding is permission to the whole cluster. And this picture sort of gives you an overview of what that looks like. I think for the documentation, it will be really good to call this out because this is sometimes uh, an item that is overlooked in the wider community, uh, the specifics between role bindings and cluster role bindings and how those are used. A lot of times, uh, it's been my experience, people will just use cluster role binding because they want to just, they, they don't want to have to deal with the security aspects of that. But I think it would be important for us to call that out in documentation to steer people correctly. Why it is a bad idea to run agents in a Jenkins namespace. Remember Jenkins Kubernetes plugin needs Kubernetes per permissions as well as to be able to uh, do things with that service account. And if that service account gets deleted, it's just super bad. So I always uh, have agents running. I, I think it's the best practice to have uh, agents running in a different namespace other than where your Jenkins is installed. So. Generally, uh, you'll see a couple online. If you've seen the online talks that I've done, I will install the Jenkins uh, controller in the Jenkins namespace, and then I will have uh, agents spun up in a blurry namespace when a job runs. And this tells you a little bit more so separate control and their resource consumption. And this is again, how you can do this using the Helm chart, which is already uh, out of the box set up to do. And I have to, so I didn't realize that when I did these slides, I, you can actually see the behind this picture, the, the Helm command that you could use. Which permissions does the Helm chart grant? None. Your best, per, you'll know best which permissions you need. That's why we don't just sort of grant cart admin root access. Uh, so I think that's best. And if I'm going too fast and you have any questions, please stop me. Here we have what we've uh, called an agent namespace, which has the separate controller in the agent pod. These are allowing limited resources only on the agent namespace. And that's better for secure and so resource consumption of the cluster overall. So 
Okay, so can you back up just so, so this one, the idea is that as the Jenkins will scale up and down the number of agents it uses, and by putting the agents in a separate names, namespace from the, from the Jenkins controller, from the Jenkins master, um, that that allows me greater safety or greater ability to say, no, you can't use, can you, can you elaborate a little on this agent namespace? Concept? Yeah. So, so what this does is two things. One, it gives you security because now you're not commingling everything in one namespace. And if somehow an eight, uh, let me take a step back. Agents have the ability to be ephemeral, meaning they can spin up for the life of the job and then tear down. Or if you want an agent to be long lived, uh, that long lived. The reason that you wanna have these in a separate namespace is it gives you the ability for secure uh, jobs not to run in any part of the agent namespace. The second part, which I think is actually a little bit more better than, than the security aspect is the resource consumption. A lot of times clusters are under, Kubernetes clusters are a heavy load already, especially with the Jenkins controller and all the jobs that may be in there. And sometimes jobs do not get configured correctly. So you may have jobs uh, that are retaining large logs. Uh, I've seen that at some companies. And you may take the cluster down. To be able to better control resources, you can separate the agents out into their own namespace. This allows you to control that namespace as opposed to controlling the Jenkins namespace uh, as a whole, which is where the controller will live. Did that answer your question, Mark? It did, thank you. I had missed the, I had missed the subtlety of persistent agents and the, the additional safety that you gain by keeping them in a, a namespace which is independent of the, the controller, the Jenkins controller or Jenkins master's namespace. Thanks. Yeah, I, I found that it was better to have the separate namespace, not only for security resources, but let's say I want to just be, let's say I have log aggregation happening in the Kubernetes cluster, and I'm really going to the API to look through the API logs. If I have to look through the full Jenkins namespace and weed out all of the controller logs and all that, it becomes super difficult. This makes it a lot easier. Thank you. Plugin installation, how does it work? Possible improvements. Uh, I, I'm not gonna go too deep into that, but uh, some parts I will say is how to configure your credentials. There is a Kubernetes credential provider plugin. In the Helm chart, you only, and now I see you have a typo in here, you only need to set the RBAC rep, uh, read secrets to true, and it will create the necessary roles and role bindings. Again, this is at a namespace level, and I put a link to where that is in the actual code uh, for that Helm chart. These are just some things that uh, kind of thinking through. So any questions about the, the Helm piece? This is at the end before we go into the Catacoda introduction. That was a lot, Zinov, I, I know. And I'm, I know you may have a lot more questions and I want you to be able to use Kristen and I as resources at any point if you run into any problems. Um, okay, thank you. So for now, I think the only problem I still have still remains um, the permissions. So I'll um, communicate more with you after the um, two sessions so I can explain better where I'm at, what I've been able to do and the issues I'm experiencing. Okay, really quick question. When you, you're installing the, the Jenkins Helm chart and that's what you're running into, the problem? No, I've installed the Helm, Helm chart and I used it to install Jenkins. So the issue I'm having is with um, running Jenkins, the container keeps crashing. So that's where I'm having the issue. Oh, so the container is crashing. It's not a permissions issue that the actual container is crashing. Um, so when I try to get the, um, to get exec into the pod or the container is complained about permissions then um also sorry i'm trying to go through 
let's do this. Let's go the, the Katakota uh, introduction that I have is, it, is a little bit shorter. Maybe what we could do is you, we could do a screen share once we're done with the meeting. Uh, maybe we could stay on a I little think bit. That's much better. Yeah. Yeah, and then I can okay. and, and and Kristen, if, if you if you have time, would love to, your input as well. Thank you. So Katakota, what is Katakota? Katakota is an interactive learning and training platform for software developers. Basically, it gives you a new environment without the need to install any required components by themselves. Catacoda provides isolation for, uh, so you're basically, you can spin up your own environment and learn about whatever the subject matter is. And the subject matter is called uh, sessions. It has an integrated editor that allows you to uh, experiment with creating configurations, updating or exploring sample applications. It helps gain a deeper understanding of how the technology can be used. For example, a user can copy a snippet of code like I've done here into the editor and run that against a virtual environment. The interactive environments can be embedded into websites or documents uh, that allow us to be able to maintain a consistent look and feel. I added a link on here on how to do that. I thought that would be really beneficial for you, uh, Zenob. You can create your you can create your own content and uh, scenarios, and I'll go in a little bit more on how to do that. I've given a link here to the Katakota docs. So, at a high level right now, currently there's a Kubernetes scenario. There's also a Jenkins scenario. I'm currently working on a Jenkins and Kubernetes uh, scenario. And my hope is, is that will be released the first week of October. And then we can get that into the, into the documents that you have. What I'd like to do is also, uh, when I create the repo, I, uh, excuse me, when I create the, the release, I'd like to be able to give you access to that Xenob and maybe possibly you become one of the maintainers of that. I think it would be a really good opportunity to get more involved in, in actual like code releases. And it's not super difficult to maintain. And I would help you all the way through. Thank you so much. That sounds really great. <sighs> that is my presentation for this. Uh, do you have any questions? Um, no, not yet. Does anybody else have any questions? Kristen, did you think it was informative enough or was it too high level? I think it was a good a high level um, discussion. I, maybe it sounds like now that we've got some free time to start looking at maybe particular problems that, you know, Z and Avi run into. Um, yeah. Especially with getting started. Or like, it's always good to have a good, like, it's all, I never see a problem with having like a baseline. Exactly. <laughs> and then working, working from there. So at least we can at least start with the same common knowledge and then kind of go forward. Exactly. I didn't want to go too in depth because I didn't want it to be like over technical in the sense right. that you may just get lost in all the details. It's easy. I always found it's easier to, to have a little bit of a guide and then do something hands on myself. Right. Zenob, did you want to maybe share your screen so we could see what the air was that your pod was getting? Yeah, okay, I'll do that. Marky, while she's getting set up to share her screen, I had the mental model that Katakoda was largely a training development, training delivery kind of platform. Um, can, oh, it looks like she's already got her screen shared. So let's delay my question until later. Well, I'm still waiting for her screen to, to, to show up. Uh, I can say, Mark, that you are correct. It is it is more of a training uh, tool, but the beauty with this training tool is you're able to uh, you're able to write scenarios really with ease, and you can take scenarios and combine them, like Kubernetes and Jenkins. It just makes it easier to deliver training content. Ah, okay. Thank you. Thanks for the clarity. Thank you, Zenob. Can you do me a favor? Can you clear your screen? Okay. 
Can you type in uh, kubectl? Get pods space dash dash all dash names uh, no no space on this last dash. Okay. Uh, no no no. You just do all dash 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 all dash namespaces. Okay. Dash. Make take the space off. Uh, bring the. It should be all one word, right? So all dash dash all dash namespaces. There you go. And hit enter. So Marky, what this is doing is it's querying her Kubernetes cluster, asking it to list the pods in all the namespaces in the in the cluster. That's correct. And the reason that I do this is in, rather than saying, okay, what namespace is Jenkins in? It just helps me sort of go a little faster. So Zenop, can you do kubect? So you, you just broke up. Uh, Mark, you may need to say that again. And I'm charmed by seeing crash loop back off. So I think that supports what yeah. what so Enop said. Kubectl get pods all namespaces allows me to see all of the namespaces and get quicker to like what I'm looking at. Rather than think it's in the Jenkins namespace, this helps me uh, get get there a lot faster. Uh, can you backspace two times, Enop, and do a dash n? Space Jenkins. Logs, L-O-G-S. And can you copy that Jenkins pod name and then paste it? And then enter. Okay. Hmm. Can you do uh can you do an up arrow? Can you take out logs? And if you just do option backspace, it'll move you back faster. And back and then type in uh describe. And then uh, can you type in describe pod? And then enter. Can you scroll up a little? Hmm. Can you hit enter? Can you do a uh, up, uh, up arrow? Can you backspace all the way to describe? 
taking out describe and then just do git sa. And sa is abbreviation for service account. Okay. Okay. And you can hit enter. Can you now do uh, up arrow? Uh, space. Jenkins, space, my uh, dash O, space YAML. And what does dash O space YAML do? So that now what I'm asking uh, this to do is the option flag and then to show me the YAML output of that Jenkins service account. And my apologies, sometimes I forget to actually say like what something means and I, I will get better at that. So what we see here is that service accounts actual YAML file. Uh, okay, Zenup, can you do kubectl git? And this is going to be all one word cluster role bindings. Hello? Yes, I didn't hit enter. Can you do uh, up arrow? Can you go back to before get and type in a dash N space Jenkins? Uh, no, before the before get. So it should be kubectl dash N Jenkins get. And then can you take off the word bindings and just have the cluster role? And enter. So the first one that we looked at, the cluster role bindings was the cluster level permissions. Now we're looking at the namespace level permissions. And can you scroll up? Okay, so I think the problem here is that the service account that you have, Jenkins, is not tied to any service, uh, excuse me, to either a cluster role or a cluster role binding. Okay. So give me a second and I have to just look at something. Okay. 
trying to see if I have a good example to show you. Okay. I'm gonna, can I share my screen real quick just to give you a, uh, an idea of what you'll have to change to fix this? Okay. Tell me when you can see my screen. Yeah, I can see it. So in this example that I have here, this is a service account and its name is Jenkins. Okay. In here, you can see that I've, uh, I've created cluster roles and then here I have a cluster role binding. Okay. In my cluster role binding, you can see that in the API group, I have actually linked the service account in here and I don't think you have that linkage happening in your cluster role bindings and that's what's stopping it. So just to, to reiterate what I said, you have an account, a service account already created and it's called Jenkins, but you don't have that service account linked to the actual permissions in the cluster role binding. Now remember a cluster role binding means this is at the actual cluster level and not namespace level. Mm -hmm. If it were namespace level, it would be a role binding. Okay. So what you'll need to do is using the command that I, I gave, which is the kubectl get cluster role bindings. Okay. You're going to want to create a new cluster role binding that's called Jenkins that ties this service account that you have already to that and that will allow the permissions. Okay. And you can see also, this is the cluster role and the cluster role, these are all of the actual uh, commands that are allowed. And my guess is, is your Helm chart is trying to execute one of these commands, but because okay. the linkage is not there, it won't work. I'm gonna send you the link to this repo Okay. I'll, put it, I'll put it in the chat right now. Give me just a second. I put that in the chat. What I would suggest doing is creating a, a cluster role and a cluster role binding based off of exactly what I have here. And it should automatically link your already existing service account and then your permissions uh, should work. Okay, thank you. I'll try that um, after this session and reach out if I have any further issues. Yeah, totally. If you get stuck or anything, please don't hesitate at any hour of the day. I, I usually keep strange hours uh, to ping me. I'm always online. Well, most of the time. Thank you. You're welcome. That was all for me, Mark. Excellent. Thanks. So Risha, would you, do you want to bring any other topics up for our session today? Um, the blog posts, um, I've worked on most of the comments um, from the mentors, but um, there are just a few of them which I don't understand clearly. I initiated a conversation with Christine already on one of them, um, but I think overall I've worked on the comments from the mentors. Excellent. So, so did was that blog post initially created in a Google Doc, and so now you're at the stage of you think you're ready to transform it into ASCII doc and submit it? Yes. Excellent. Great. Okay. I apologize. I'm not sure if I've reviewed it, but if Kristen's reviewed it and if Marky's reviewed it, that's great. I will certainly see it during the 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 uh, code review in in the pull request to Jenkins.io. Okay. Yeah. So that's all from me. Okay. And I heard a I had a, heard a good suggestion earlier today in a conversation with Oleg. He liked the idea that you were that you started last week of hosting the, the initial documentation in a Google Doc for people's comments, he suggested you might also want to share a link to that Google Doc 
to the Jenkins Docs mailing list so that we can encourage other people to help us review it and comment on it even before it becomes a pull request to Jenkins.io. Okay. Then, please make, um, Zina, please make sure if you do that, that you set that link to only allow comments. Do not allow editor access. Yes, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do not need to be spammed in your document. Absolutely. <laughs> We've had that problem already, so I'm, I remember. Well, well, and there are even times when I wonder if I want to turn off comments because of obnoxious comments. So for sure, it's great to send a link to it. And if you're willing to allow public comments initially, that's a real positive. If someone starts becoming obnoxious or annoying or unacceptable, uh, you're welcome to disable comments too and just make them have to send their comment to the email list. Okay, thank you. So um, I'll try and resolve the issue I'm having um, based on Mark's suggestions. Once I'm done with that, I'll push the link to the mailing list. I'll make the necessary corrections in the doc and push it to the mailing list. Excellent, thank you. Thank you. I will add these slides to the uh, to the uh, the meeting agenda notes shortly. Um, also, I wanted to ask a question. Um, Maki, is it okay if I used um, content from this session in the documentation? Yeah, I'm fine with that. As long as you're okay with it, I'm fine. And as long as Kristen's okay with it, not a problem. Sure. Okay. Okay, that's all for me. Great, thank you. So Zina, one of the things that would help me is if we we, we just keep notes in the uh, in the Google Doc for this office hours. I'm I'm typing some things in there now as a placeholder, but that way I have a place. We have a place to embed uh, Marky's Marky's hyperlink. So Marky uh, overview of. Katakoda and Helm and includes diagnosis and investigation. Good. Mark, can you link the the knock the excuse me the doc for this uh, for this office hours in in the in our chat here? You bet. Yeah, find it. it's right there. I think at least that's the one where I've been editing. And then let me make a note. Suggestion. Oh, you you had asked about. Uh, let's see. It was uh, blog post pull request. Blog post uh, reviews done. Ready for a pull request. And then the other was um, documentation. Share the link. Docs mailing list. A reminder: allow comments, but don't allow edit for public. We don't really want everybody to be corrupting or disturbing your document. I also linked the slide deck that I used for this in the notes. Excellent. Thank you, Marky. Just for my safety, let's. You're welcome. Yes, okay, and it's it's publicly available. Great. Okay. Thank you. Anything else, Zina, from you today? Um, nothing else from me. All right. Thank you. So we'll next meet on Thursday. Um, uh, let's see. Is Thursday Thursday it may have a collision with DevOps World? Is are at least one of the other mentors available to? To attend on Thursday, I think I'm available, but I'll have to check, double check my my schedule. If you're not, I think I I can, or, or Kristen, if you want to, whichever. Okay. Right, I think I should be here. That, that's not a big. I'm not. Don't have. I'm like not hosting any DevOps World sessions or. Okay, excellent. So we've got at least one mentor available. So Thursday's meeting is will go as planned. Excellent. Thanks everyone. Thank you very much. Recording a link to the recording will be posted in about an hour after I get it archived and placed on YouTube. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great week, everybody.
YouTube 